Vince Russo is one of the most polarizing figures in wrestling history. When he became the head writer of the WWE, wrestling changed forever, and whether it was for the best or worse is completely up to you. Vince Russo has written for WWE, WCW and TNA and has had his fair share of critics and of course has had his fair share of feuds <clears throat> Jim Cornette <clears throat> and controversy. What's up guys, it's Top 10 Wrestling and welcome to the Vince Russo Incident. The Vince Russo vs Jim Cornette video is coming soon. In fact, if this video hits 1,500 likes, then it will be my very next video. But yeah, let's talk Vince Russo and let's get right into this video. Here's a sneak peek of something that will be discussed in the Jim Cornette vs Vince Russo video. So I'm sure most of you are aware what the brawl for all was. But for those of you who don't know what it is, or are maybe a little younger, this isn't your era, then let me explain to you what the Brawl for All was. The Brawl for All was a tournament that took place in the WWF that lasted from June 29th, 1998 until August 24th, 1998. The, the twist with this tournament though, is that it wasn't a wrestling tournament, it was a boxing tournament. Among the participants were Road Warrior Hawk, Bart Gunn, Savio Vega, Stevie Blackman, The Godfather, Dan Seven, and once again, I cannot stress enough, this was a shoot. They actually had boxing matches. The boxing matches or the fights would take place in between the wrestling matches and segments on Raw. There were a lot of injuries, it was awful boxing, and... Yeah, just wasn't very good. And can you take a guess who came up with this? It was, of course, Vince Russo. But it's the reason why Vince Russo did this tournament in the first place. No, it's not that he's a massive boxing fan. No, it's not that he thought this could draw or would be cool. It's because Vince Russo hated Bradshaw. Let me explain. Bradshaw, aka JBL, John Bradshaw Layfield, he's always been known for being a locker room leader or just a vocal voice, a loud voice in the locker room. A grizzled vet, if you will. And apparently Vince Russo didn't like Bradshaw and the entire reason that he created the Brawl for All was because he hated Bradshaw and wanted to see him get knocked out. Bradshaw made it all the way to the final of the tournament where he would face Bart Gunn. Bart Gunn had previously knocked out Dr. Death Steve Williams who was WWF's favourite to win the tournament and who had apparently already been paid the $100,000 prize before the second round of his quarterfinal match with Bart Gunn. Bart Gunn knocked out Steve Williams in a huge upset win and made it to the finals against Bradshaw where he indeed knocked out Bradshaw and Vince Russo got exactly what he wanted. Bart Gunn, if you're wondering, went on to do pretty much nothing in the WWF uh, and then was knocked out by Butterbean because they had a fight at WrestleMania. Yep. Russo is known for his time with WWE, WCW and TNA, but TNA is the company he spent the longest with. Vince Russo wrote for TNA and appeared as an on-screen character between 2002 and 2014, but Vince Russo did have a bit of a turbulent employment history with TNA though. In fact, he actually made two returns to the company. His first return took place on September 1st, 2006, when Dixie Carter resigned him. This was after he had left the company in 2004 and had stated in interviews that it was a mess working at TNA. Well, he was back two years later. But in 2012, he would leave the company for good as Dixie Carter announced that him and TNA had mutually parted ways. But that wouldn't be his time done with TNA because yes, I know you heard me say he returned twice. I know you're all saying, Greg, you literally said two returns. So yes, he did have a second return and he did return to TNA after his 2012 departure, but it was a complete secret. When Vince Russo left in 2012, it should have been a big thing for TNA. At that point, it was time to move on from his booking, but after a bit of time, it felt like nothing had really changed. Vince Russo was secretly rehired by TNA. It was not announced to the public, it was not known by the public that he was working there again. And according to Vince Russo, he returned on October 24th, 2013. It was only February the 14th, 2012 that he had been released from TNA or they'd mutually parted ways. A year and a half later, he was already back. 
But in April of 2014, PW Insider released a report claiming that Russo was working as a consultant for TNA Wrestling. Russo denied the report, but on July 15th, PW Insider posted a crazy article that showed Russo had accidentally sent an email to them with instructions on how TNA commentators work. Vince Russo then released a statement saying that apparently he had always been working as a consultant for TNA and working with TNA's commentators and that one of the conditions was Russo keep his involvement confidential but then that statement was removed from his website. Two weeks after the email leak, Russo claims that he was officially done with TNA. And yes, this was actually it. This was now that he was finally done with TNA. He's never returned since, to my knowledge. But Vince Russo's secret rehiring would have major repercussions for TNA in the long term. Because it can almost be looked at that this is what killed TNA. Spike TV were very, very unhappy about TNA bringing back Vince Russo. And it's been attributed for a long time that this was one of the reasons that Spike TV ended up dropping TNA from the network and stopped airing Impact on there. Losing the Spike TV deal was a huge loss for TNA, and really they haven't really recovered since. They went to Destination America afterwards, but after that they leaped from TV network to TV network, and they're where they are now, on Axis TV as Impact Wrestling. Regardless though, the Vince Russo leaks and the Vince Russo secret rehiring was an absolute whirlwind of events when it first came out and first came to light. Since leaving TNA, Vince Russo has not worked for a major wrestling company, and it looks like he probably never will again. It seems as though his writing days are behind him. One man that Vince Russo had to make amends with to work with in TNA was Hulk Hogan. Vince Russo and Hulk Hogan had a bit of a rivalry and had a bit of heat due to Bash at the Beach 2000. At the time, Vince Russo was working in creative for WCW, and at Bash at the Beach 2000, Russo was involved in an incident with Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan was booked to lose a match against Jeff Jarrett, and Hogan just refused to lose the match. He used his creative control, did his Hogan politicking that he always did in WCW. You know the drill. And apparently, just due to the fact that Vince Russo had no direction for Hogan at all, he forced Jarrett to literally lie down for Hogan, which caused Hogan to pick up the microphone and say, this is why the company is in the damn shape it's in, because of BS like this, before scoring the victory. Vince Russo then came out publicly firing him and calling him a bold son of a bee and a piece of sugar honey iced tea. Just in case you wanted to know how crazy WCW in 2000 was, this caused Hulk Hogan to be absolutely livid backstage and he walked out of WCW. Oh yeah, and of course he took him to court for defamation, possibly for the bold comment, Hey, I'm not bold, brother! But the Vince Russo vs Hulk Hogan feud isn't the only feud that Vince Russo has. He has of course had a feud with Jim Cornette and if you want to see the full Jim Cornette vs Vince Russo video then just get this video to 1500 likes and it will be the very next video. I'll get working on it immediately. So do it! <laughs> 